What's up, my quesadillas? 10 years of YouTube. Isn't that wonderful? I can vividly remember the day, the idea of creating YouTube videos sparked in my mind. I was standing on the left side of a computer screen with my brother in the middle and I think some friends around us. And we were watching Master Chief dance to disco on YouTube. And then on the screen was how to be gangster by Nigahiga. And that was where inspiration took place. Over 333 videos, 300,000 subscribers, 15 million channel views later, I'm 22 years old and starting to grasp the reality of adulthood and what it's going to take for me to be a full time YouTuber. I'll make a reaction video on my old content as we did for the five year anniversary. But for now, I think it's necessary to dedicate a video on reflecting on what I learned. Let's make this even more YouTube -y by breaking it down into 10 things I learned being a YouTuber. I'll reflect on each year and what I learned in it. Number one dare to believe how did this even begin it just happened was it free will or destiny sure i was inspired by the asian pioneers of youtube like niga higa kev jumba but it wasn't until years later that i actually pulled the trigger when i was eight years old i was living in germany and i started a channel with my friend billy billy's in alabama now he went to rehab for uh, being an alcoholic and other hard drugs and he's been sober since March 2020 so that's good. But yeah, I was 5th grade, he was 6th grade and we just decided to start a channel. We told our plan to a pair of girls that were the female versions of us, you know, 5th grade, 6th grade, black hair, blonde hair. My parallel was actually the topic of this video. Billy actually dated his parallel's twin sister for two days, but anyway. We told them what we're doing and they immediately pulled out their iPod Touch and recorded their own video just straight copying us and that was annoying so we made sure to put an effort into ours we made an introduction video for the channel and then a video on why we hate birds which is still in iMovie on a hard drive somewhere we didn't get too far but the introduction video is hidden in the mariana trench of youtube with 233 views under uh very shitty YouTube channel name with two subscribers. Perhaps I'll reveal it for the 15 year anniversary. After Germany though, I moved to Monterey, California, and that's where this channel began. I spent seventh and eighth grade there. The channel didn't start until I was in eighth grade. Seventh grade though, I remember having thoughts of starting a YouTube channel again. Specifically one time where I was in front of a mirror and I said to it, what's up guys, it's Epic Me. And that was the channel name I thought of, Epic Me. Epic K, later changed to K, was created a year later and it wouldn't have happened if I didn't dare to believe. Number two, people are powerful. In eighth grade was the first time I felt the power of camaraderie. Our group consisted of a white kid, an Asian kid, a Mexican kid, and a black kid. We ran the school that year. Me and the white kid were in a class called Video Bulletin, which acted like a news studio where we would make a 10 minute video that would play every morning, every day, on the TV in the class. We always made skits that made us pretty popular and we developed a knack for video creating. I really was at the top of my game in terms of social status there and without that I don't know if I would have started this. One time my math teacher played my videos in class and I was already confident and popular but even then it was embarrassing so I don't know if I would have been able to take it if I wasn't. People are powerful and I'm grateful to have had said people during that time. Number three, solitude creates geniuses. After Monterey, I moved to Japan 
the city I'm in now. I went to Japanese middle school for one year, half of second grade and half of third grade. I wasn't fluent in Japanese, so I wasn't very interconnected with everybody. And I didn't make an effort to do so because I had a passion. I was like the cliche quiet kid that got bullied and was generally alone during recess, but is a significant character because he's working on something important. It's kind of like that, except I was also admired because of my half American novelty. It was like an abusive relationship. I would be harassed, but they also said they loved me. The lack of connection to others during this time led me to cultivate my genius and solidify my dedication to YouTube. Number four. Be seriously unserious. It's not enough to just be unserious because inevitably something's gonna hit a soft spot and you're gonna get real serious then. The unseriousness must be taken seriously. This was the case when I was soon to leave Japan and I decided to fake a Japanese accent for a year in Colorado. It came from a place of freedom personal amusement. It led to the pinnacle of my channel because I was seriously unserious. Number five, commitment creates character. Literally in my case, up until recently, I've thought that I've done nothing significant in my life. There's no highlight. There's nothing that makes me, me. No token of boastfulness but it's been in front of me this whole time it's what everyone talks to me about it's what everyone knows me for i pulled off something extraordinary this commitment changed my life it kick-started my character number six patience after my sophomore year i switched high schools i was just having fun i wasn't thinking about blowing up and then boom i blew the fuck up after five years of making youtube videos my dream finally became reality. Number seven, know who you are. I didn't quite have a grounded sense of self at the time, so my newfound fame and wealth was taken advantage of a lot. I was just having fun, chasing pleasures without realizing I was selling my soul. I have an experiential sympathy for celebrities like Disney stars and stuff. I tasted what they go through. In fact, you don't taste it until it's over. Number eight, quesadillas. <laughs> I'm only realizing now as I write this script, but the act of naming my subscribers changed the way my very being operates. You see, before it was just me, just an I, and I thought I was making content for someone that I think is out there. But but once that great unknown was labeled, I was able to be totally certain that someone is watching. An other was born. It went from one entity to two entities in this universe. Or should I say, the universe split into two. It gave me something to press on. It gave me a reason to be confident. I went from conserved and internal to passionate and external. I knew there is something here and that I can influence it. It's a dangerous game I was playing though because I was personalizing a camera and the response I get from it is not human. Sure, it's humans commenting, but it's not immediate. It doesn't align with human nature. It's computer nature. And I forgot about humans. I essentially became a computer. This is fine and perhaps necessary these days, but I was a fool. Instead of taking my comments as mere typings on a screen, I fantasized my praise on the internet as if it was face to face. My ego? became ginormous. If you would like me to reveal more about my psychological transitions and possibly shed some light on the unrecognized darkness that technology casts, let me know in the comments. It really rattles my brain to keep talking on this. I have to dive deep. It's uncomfortable and tiring like a workout. So yeah. Number eight, quesadillas. Number nine, you can't have everything. Ever since I was little, I wanted everyone to like me. In fact, I thought everyone liked me. There should be no reason anyone doesn't. Then I grew up and became unconscious, so I don't have to face the fact that things are not as I thought when I was a child. Now the child came back, I'm conscious, and creating 
the fantasy of child me into reality or die trying. Number 10. Life is a big high school. People always say pick a niche. Since I moved here, people would categorize my content as Japan content, but I never wanted a slice. I want the whole thing. This is about me. I didn't know who me was, but it was important to me. And then I realized that even me is a niche because I'm into different niches. We can't have everyone like us because we're all into different things. The things everyone pays attention to differ. There's just one thing that everyone will turn their head for. And you know what that is. You don't. Alright, I'll tell you. S. E. X. The most influential people in the world are the ones who make you feel comfortable regarding your sexual behavior or empower it. This is why you can't get everybody invested in you. Everyone's on different vibrations. I can't be on two at the same time. So what everyone does is choose a frequency, a niche that they prefer most, and live according to that for the duration of their physical existence. And at 22 years old, that's the question that Kay has come to ask himself. What frequency do I want to be on? Who do I want to be? Who am I? Do I want to be a goth, a band kid, a jock, a geek, a lone wolf like I usually was, a teacher, a principal, a lunch lady, a dean. All I do know is that for a moment, maybe a few, I want all eyes on me. So, that's what I recall learning. I want to thank Jawad Kareem, Chad Hurley, and Steve Chen for creating this behemoth of a website. I want to thank Nigahiga for inspiring me to embark on this journey that led me to be sitting here. Lastly, I want to thank you, my quesadillas, for sticking by me and supervising my existential endeavors. Have a great day.